Okay, this is okay. Go ahead and uh, switch on the microphone so the people in the next room can hear us. Make sure you have it on the loudest setting. Testing. Can can you guys in the observation room hear us? Hello. Yes, we hear you. Okay. This is the autopsy of one Mitchell Blackburn, male. I don't see an age on his report. Did you by chance get his age, Says? Oh, I did not. Uh, it would be on his ID. Um, give me one second. I think I, I, think I have it. Uh, I, I got a copy of it. Give me one moment. Those are common muscle spasms when rigor mortis is setting in. There's nothing to worry about there. I just turned the microphone down one, uh, one level. Can you guys in the observation still hear us? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. okay. Just wanted to make sure I wasn't screaming to the whole hospital. All right, so that's going to be a um, 07 2000 Okay, birthday of Mitchell Blackburn is 07 2000 So he is 22 years of age and reputable health according to his outsides other than his wounds not overweight or anything like that. Um, so first we will start with the procedure with a overview and a search of his outside of persons to count all the wounds, exit wounds, any abnormalities in the skin, any abrasions, so it can all be marked down. So you go ahead and take from the toes to the waist and I will take the chest area and we just count them up. And I'll uh, mark them on the paperwork as we go. God, they they put a lot of holes in him. Okay. Oh, okay. One, two, three. Shit. I'm counting at least two over here. And then on the other leg, three. Okay, um, from his hips up, oh wow, there are what looks to be 15, 16 entrance wounds, two in the face, multiple in the chest and stomach area, looks to be two in the shoulders, two in the arms, and three in the left hip. Now we're going to look for all the exit wounds. We have to make sure all the bullets are out of him. Um, so we got to count carefully, make sure we count them all. And if we miss any, we, we're going to have to look for them as we're inside of him, okay? Okay. So just look carefully for any exit wounds. Uh -huh. Yeah, we got we got exit wounds here. Okay, how many how many do you have down there? Do you have all five? Yeah, all five. Okay. Uh, let me actually this last one. Yeah, that one that one is too. Uh, okay, we we are gonna have an issue. Um, unless the bullets came out of the same hole, it seems we are missing six exit wounds. So just keep that in mind as we're inside going through his parts to if we catch or see any bullets, we grab them out, we measure them and put them in an evidence bag. Okay. All right. So we don't have to worry about his legs because those ones are all. No, they're mostly probably going to be in the chest area because the chest is the densest part of the body. Right. Everywhere else is pretty thin. So they probably went straight through and through. Okay. Okay. At this time, I'm going to 
take the scalpel and create the Y incision on his chest. Um, do you mind grabbing up the tooth forceps and weighting down the flaps once they are cut open? <sighs> okay, his blood is uh, pulling a little bit. He's not in full rigor mortis. His blood isn't fully congealed yet, so you're probably going to have to wipe that away as you put the forceps on there. Okay. Okay, you go ahead and do that side. I'll grab this side. Okay, here we go. Okay. All right, so just right there? Yep, just okay. open enough to so we can grab the rib shears and sadly cut his front rib cage off so we can reach the organ area. If you don't mind grabbing that and going through his second, third, fourth, and fifth rib on that side, and then I will do the same on this side, and then we can pry it open. Okay, so sorry, you don't uh, do three. The, you, yeah, you don't want to do the top rib because the top rib isn't in the way. So you're gonna count from there and do the second through the sixth rib on that side. Okay, second through the sixth. Okay. Okay. Two, three, four, five, and six. Okay. Okay. Before you there hand you me that, I'm going to give you the hard part. Okay. You're going to have to cut the middle sternum between the rib bone one and rib bone two. It's very dense. You're going to have to put some elbow grease into it. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. You wanted to learn, I'm just showing you the ropes. Yeah, no, okay, all right. So a lot of, it's going to need a lot of pressure? Yeah, you're going to have to push down pretty hard. Um, don't be afraid of cracking ribs or puncturing organs. He's punctured plenty enough, and he won't feel a cracked rib. Okay, here we go. Okay, you're almost through oh. it. Push a little harder. Uh. Okay, there we go. Okay, and then. Okay, you heard you heard that pop that you. There we go. It. Yep. Yep. Okay. Okay. Now I'll do this side, and then we'll grab some forceps to pull this rib cage off. Okay. Okay. Two. Three. Four, five. Okay, this one seems to have been fractured previously. It has a little bit of scar tissue around it. Hold on. Okay, six. Okay. Now we just pry straight up in a very hard jerking motion to uh, detach all the ligaments and the tissues behind the rib cage. Oh, wow. Okay. okay. I think I got it. There we go. Okay. Go ahead and put this in the uh, toxic biohazard basket. Uh, it's the basket over there by the bar still, yep. Okay. From just looking, I like the record state, he is an organ donor. So any organs that we can keep and preserve for transplants, we will use. However, if they have any sort of nick, cut, abrasion, puncture from bullets, anything like that, it is a no-go for those ones. Okay. So at this time, if you get to the foot of the bed, I will start removing organs and I will hand you one at a time. I will name it for the microphone and then you will go to the scale and weigh it and name it again just so we double check everything. Okay. Okay. And then do you, you want me to say the weight of it as well? Yes. If you don't okay. mind. Okay. Okay. First is going to be... 
uh, let's get the liver out the way so the lungs will have an easier time to get out. Okay. Okay, insertion right there. Clear, clear the the tissues, the ligaments. Okay. Okay, go ahead and take the liver and let me know what it weighs. This is the liver of Mitchell Blackburn. And if at any point anybody in the observation room has any questions, just go ahead and hit the intercom and ask away. We will try to answer to the best of our knowledge. All right. For the liver, it's going to be um, 2,521 grams. Liver, 2,521 grams? Yes. That is with an average range. Uh, do you see any puncture wounds, markings, bullet holes, anything like that in it? Mm, no, I do not. Go ahead and uh, stick it in a jar of formaldehyde for now, and we can actually just process them. I'll actually stick it in a uh, bucket of dry ice, and once we're done, we can process and check each organ just to make sure and make sure that they're viable. And if you need extra dry ice, there should be some in this thing over here, this big box over here. Over here? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay, next is going to be big ones. They are his lungs. We're going to do them individually, one at a time. First one will be his right lung. Oh, God. Yeah, you don't even have to put this one in dry ice. Just go ahead and put this one straight into the toxic unit once you get the way. Okay. There are like three holes in this thing. Yeah. Okay, here you go. Make sure the back has three exit holes as well, since we are still looking for six bullets. Sorry, you said this was the right lung? Right lung, yes. Okay. All right. Uh, right lung is going to be 509 grams. Okay. And do you see all the exit wounds? Uh, one, two. Uh, no. Okay, then don't actually put that in the waste basket. Put that in a dry ice container, and we will okay. cut that open and check for a bullet. Okay. And while you're doing that, I'll continue with removing of the left lung. Okay. You said that one weighed 509? Yes. Okay. Maybe the extra nine, maybe the extra little grams because of the bullet, Here. you know? Go ahead and uh, weigh this one, left lung. There we go. Okay. And if the weight is disparaged more than, I say, five grams, I think you might be correct if it's different by that much. Okay. Let's see. Uh, it is going to be 495. 495? Yep. I think you might be correct that there might be a bullet in his right lung then. Okay. Um, um all right. So this one looks okay, but I'm, um, should I have you check it? Yeah, go ahead and just, we're going to put everything in dry ice containers separate for okay. now, and then we'll check it afterwards. I don't want to leave this cadaver open for too long. Gotcha. Okay, here we go. Okay, next we are going to do a dual removal of both his kidneys because they're both attached to the main stem of the urethra. Okay. So it's easy to remove them both. However, you are going to want to separate them when you weigh them. Okay, here you go. Just what you're going to want to do is cut down the middle 
of the tubing and just uh, okay. weigh them separately and let me know what the right and left kidney weights. Oh, uh, Chaz? Yeah. Give, give me a jar, please. I see a bullet in, lodged in between his intestines. Okay. Um, sorry. Uh, yep, just grab a jar right with a saline solution in it. Oh, shit. There's actually two here. Let me see if I can get that other one. It's kind yes. of pinched in there. There you go. Okay, go ahead and drop these in. Now seal it and uh, just set it on a table to the side, please. Oh, shit. Yeah. This poor guy. Somebody must have really hated this guy. I mean, they shot him pretty bad. This. Wow. Okay. Go ahead and get the weight of those kidneys. I'm going to work on removing his uh, heart, pancreas, and spleen, or at least detaching them so we can just easily weigh them. Okay. All right. So left kidney we're going to do first and it's going to be 137. 137 grams. But there's a puncture possibly here. So I'm going to just put this in. Yep. Put them all in individual containers with dry Wait. ice and we will weigh this them one afterwards. first. Okay, I got a spleen and pancreas. I'm detached. sorry. Oh, okay. Let's see, kidney. Right kidney. Uh, right kidney is going to be 132 grams. Okay, so there is a weight discrepancy between those two. That might just be how he was made, or it might be a bullet. So okay. just make sure we keep that as a note in our heads. Okay, I do have his pancreas and spleen detached. I am going to try to detach his heart now. However, I do need you to grab a forcep and pinch his aortic artery because when I cut it, it might spurt blood everywhere because he is not full rigor mortis yet. Oh, you said forceps? Yeah, get a tooth forcep and just clamp it about three millimeters above his heart, his ventricle valves right on the aortic artery. Let me know when you got that secured and I will start the incision. Okay, just right there. Secured, okay, here we go. Oh okay. shit, goddamn. Yep, see how it squirted Damn. a little bit? If, oh. if the forcep wasn't there, it would have been like a money shot to your face. Because of the rigor mortis is trying to force the muscle to con contra ah, contract as hard as it can before it sets in. So it would have squirted everywhere. So good thing we did that. Go ahead and uh, weigh that. And I will bring over the pancreas and the spleen. Three seventy five for his heart. Three seven five for the heart. Yep. You wanna you wanna are you good over there? Or you wanna put this? Yeah, away? just just uh or... go ahead and weigh those and put those away because I'm just okay. gonna sew him back up. All right, I'm gonna place this. And then for a we second. will we will start the brain right after we're done here. So pancreas, we'll do that one next. Fold this back up. You know what? Because he's completely empty, I'm just going to do staples instead of stitches just to hold them together better. Okay, here we go. And for pancreas, we have 144. 144? That, yes. Okay, that's a little high. The average for a pancreas is between 100 and 135 for a male his age and height. So there's a possibility that he might have had a disease of some sort that he didn't know about, or there might be bullets in there. 
Okay. And uh, then we have the spleen here. Okay. Here we go. Uh, spleen is going to be 151. 151? Yes. Okay, go ahead and package those up. And then do you want to do the honors of starting the scalping process? Uh, give me one second to place these over here and I yep. can help you. Okay. Okay, you're going to take the scalpel. Where are you? Oh, Come sorry. over to the side, yeah. You're going to take the scalpel right here, and uh, okay. you're going to start right behind his right ear and do a incision from his right ear to his left ear over his forehead, and then from the left ear to the right ear on the back of his head. You're not trying to cut through the bone. You're just trying to cut and detach the skin and muscle right now. Okay. Oh, God. It's it's okay if it's on not straight. It's okay if it's a little wavy. We'll fix it when we sew them back up. Try to keep it as straight as possible, though. Okay, here we go. All right. So right to left there. Um, okay. You got a clean incision? Yeah, I, I think. How's that look? Okay, on yeah, it looks pretty there? clean up here, yeah. Okay, all right. Now I'm just going to do it on the back side here. Okay, here we go. And the other half. All right, I think I got it. Okay. How's that, look? that that actually looks pretty good. Okay. It's a it's a little wavy by the ear. You're gonna get used to that though, where you have to fold the ear down to get the line perfectly oh, straight. Okay. Other right, than that, it's perfectly okay. Um okay. if you wanna grab the bone saw, we can start the incision into the skull so we can remove the brain. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, I'm going to basically follow your incision line with the saw instead, and I'm going to cut through the bone and try not to cut through the brain matter. Um, bone saws are actually very dull when it comes to soft materials. They are mainly used for hard materials, and that's why they're easy to use around the brain. Okay. Okay. Got it. This poor dude, he got shot in the face as well. God damn. They did not treat him fairly, whoever did this to him. He was a good officer. Yeah, I think I've met him once, and he seemed like a very decent guy. Okay, I think I'm through. Uh, yep. Right there. Okay. Okay. Here comes the not so gentle part. Okay. Um, if anybody in the observation room is queasy to not gentleness, uh, I would recommend to look away at this point. What we're going to do is we're going to grab the hammer and chisel, and we are going to smack the chisel with the hammer into the center top of his skull cavity to create a hole in the skull so we can put in the skull key so we can remove the skull cap. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, that sounds yeah, like a lot. I'm going to I'm gonna let you do gruesome. most yep. most of that. Cause yeah, I, I was just <laughs> walking you through the process, but it's okay. going to be a little gruesome. So if you don't want to look, that's understandable because you got to kind of hit hard with the hammer and it doesn't feel pleasant hitting somebody in the f head with a hammer. Okay. Okay. 
this damn table. Okay, on the count of three. One, two. Oh. Okay, I think that's a decent enough hole to get the skull key in. What a skull key is, is basically a T-shaped metal device that has a hook on one end, and you place it in that hole and then tilt it upwards and the hook will attach to the skull itself, and it makes it easier to pull the skull cap off without damaging the, the surrounding areas, just in case you were wondering. Okay. It sounds a lot more brutal than it is. The br most brutal part is the hammering. Okay. Damn table, I keep forgetting about that table can't move. Right. Okay, place the skull key in, push it down a little bit, and then I pull. Okay. Okay, see how it came off clean? No, yeah. no rips or anything? That's what that is used for. Okay. Okay, now all we have to do is sever his brain from his spinal stem. So we can easily take it out. Once it's severed from that, it just basically falls out because that's the only thing holding it in place other than brain fluid. Okay. So once I do that, I will hand it to you and you give it away. And we're actually going to put his brain back in because we do not do brain transplants at this time. That just, okay, so after, yeah. after we get yeah, right. Yeah, once we weigh it, make sure there's no bullets exit wounds entrance wounds all that good stuff we will be placing it back in sewing his skull cap back on and then he will be ready for a mortician or the funeral director whoever his family has set up for him okay okay here you go okay go ahead and give that away Okay, uh, for the brain, we got 1,407, 1,407. 1,407 grams, correct? Yep. Always make sure you state what uh, measurement you're taking the measurements in when you're recording it. Gotcha. Okay, here you go. Okay, now we just place it back in. We don't have to sew it up or anything like that. The brain is just basically sitting there like a... Like it's sitting in a pool noodle. Okay. And then we put the skull cap back on, and this part is going to be the fun part. You get to staple his incision closed. Okay. You want your staples to be about a half inch apart each, and try okay. to keep it as close to his hairline as possible, just in case they want an open casket. However, he does have two gunshot wounds to his face, so I'm thinking they probably won't. Um, well, the, I didn't look, to, I'm sorry, I didn't look to see if there was any bullets in his brain. Uh, I didn't see any, be and also I counted two entrance wounds and two exit wounds in his, in his neck head. and okay. above. So. Okay. Okay, so, I just wanted to make okay. sure. I'm going to hold this in place while you start the stitches or the staples, and then once you get about six in, I can actually let go, and it will hold itself in place while you finish them off. So okay. go ahead and start stapling. Here we go. All right, there's one, two. Oh, careful by the ear. Remember to fold it oh, downwards so okay. you don't staple the ear to it. Um, three, four, five. Okay, I'm going to let go and let you finish that up. And once you're done with that, we're pretty much done. Just uh, wash your hands and replace your gloves. I'm going to go into the observation room and see if they had any questions while you finish this up, okay? Okay. Thank you very much for your assistance today. You're welcome.
How you ladies doing? Not bad. So, do you guys have any questions, concerns, comments? Um, no, a little gruesome, but, you know. It can be. I think I'm good, unless Luna has questions. Okay. Well, we're about finished here. I'm going to type up that report and uh, <laughs> ship it your way, Miss Cat. Okay. And then you can ship it to the police. Um, I will find out the measurements of the bullets and write that in the report as well. Okay. Thank you very much for observing. Yeah, thanks for letting us. It was fun. Yeah, definitely. And do you know if he's going to have a funeral or a cremation or... Okay, do we place him back in a private room for now? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, Kat, are you still clocked in? Okay, I gotta go. Oh, we gotta clock in to be able to use the stretcher, so. Yeah, oh. he, he's not gonna feel anything. We can just grab okay. him up. Here, you grab at his feet, I'll grab at his chest because dead weight is very heavy. Okay. There we go. There we go. Here, I'll hold the next door open for you. Thank you. Or not. Okay, yeah, just set him there until they figure out if he's going to have a funeral.